Hello grade 12 students, welcome back. You are still here listening to another exciting lesson in Practical Research 2. Our today's lesson is all about the scope and the limitation of the study. For today's objectives, at the end of this module, you are expected to discuss the concept of scope and delimitation of study and formulate the scope and delimitation of your study. Let's start with the definitions of scope and delimitation. The scope describes the coverage of the study. It specifies what is covered in terms of concept, number of subjects, or the population included in the study, as well as the timeline when the study was conducted. The limitation, on the other hand, is the citing of factors or variables that are not to be included in the boundary in terms of time frame, number of subjects, participants, or respondents who are excluded. Specify that which you will not deal with in the study. This section discusses the parameters of the research in paragraph. It answers the basic questions. 1. What? The topic of investigation and the variables included. 2. Where? the venue or the setting of the research. 3. When, the time frame by which the study was conducted. 4. Why, the general objectives of the research. 5. Who, the subject of the study, the population and sampling. Lastly is how. The methodology of the research, which may include the research design, methodology, and the research instrument. It may also discuss why certain variables were not included in the research. Let's take this example. The main purpose of the study is to provide information regarding metrosexuality and how being a metrosexual affects the lifestyle of the student. The study considers the student's personal information, such as their name, optional, gender, age, and section. The researchers limited the study to eight male and female secondary education students enrolled in the second semester of school year 2015 to 2016 of Technological Institute of the Philippines. Each of these respondents was given a questionnaire to answer. The students selected came from four different sections to prevent bias and get objective perceptions. Moving on, let's have the significance of the study. In this part of the research, the researcher defines who will benefit out of the findings of the study. He or she describes how the problem will be solved and specifically pinpoints who will benefit from such findings or results. Usually, the beneficiaries of the study are those experts concerned about the problem, the administrators or policy makers who make the decisions or implement programs, the subject themselves, future researchers, and those who are directly or indirectly affected by the problem. One may also look into any contribution of the study to the field of specialization or discipline or strand, any advantage.
advancement or new knowledge that the study contributes to the science or the state of the art. In this portion of the study, one may also state the specific sectors who will benefit from the study. This part also justifies the rationale of the undertaking. Here are the tips in writing the significance of the study. Number one, refer to the statement of the problem. Your problem statement can guide you in identifying the specific contribution of your study. You can do this by observing a one-to-one -one correspondence between the statement of the problem and the significance of the study. Number two, write from general to specific. Write the significance of the study by looking into the general contribution of your study, such as its importance to society as a whole, then to individuals which may include yourself as a researcher. Yay! That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening. Please stay safe by staying at home. The example of the significance of the study will be sent to our GC. Please be updated and be ready for your first wave of defense on week 6. Thank you and may God bless us all.